Hey guys, my name is Mr Bison and I have been a maths teacher for the last 10 years. If you are in year 11 and you're thinking about whether maths A-level is right for you, then this is definitely going to be the video that you need to be watching. So I've got lots and lots of experience that I thought I would share with you. So I've often had year 11 students asking me, is maths A-level the right one for me? Is it going to be too difficult? Am I going to enjoy it? So here we go. So first thing you might want to know about is what grade do you need to be able to get into maths at A-level? Well, at my school, it's a grade six, which means obviously you need to have been doing the higher paper at GCSE. But I know there are lots of other schools that have a higher entry requirement, maybe of a grade seven. So just make sure that you check for the sixth form college or the school that you want to go to, to see that you can get in. I would already start off with a big warning. If you do get a grade six at GCSE, the jump between GCSE and A-level is very, very high. And I found that lots of students have struggled with A-level and not been able to achieve as high a grade as they might like to. So if it's something that you're thinking about doing, you should really be trying to prepare to get as high a grade as possible. If that's already happened, well, you've still got the summer to try and work on those grades from GCSE. Maybe you can do some extra revision and preparation before you start in September. So why might you want to do maths at A-level? Well, I think there's three reasons that students normally say to me. The first one is definitely the most important, and it really is just an absolute love of the subject. If you have found when you've been doing GCSE maths that you've just really enjoyed learning about new things, or that you have been able to sit down and do your maths homework and time has sort of flown by really quickly, um, then maths at A-level is gonna be the kind of thing that you should enjoy. Maybe you like puzzles, maybe you like that satisfaction of being able to understand something that you couldn't do before. I say that it's important that you love the subject because at A-level you're spending many more hours learning about it and many more hours doing homework. So it's gonna be absolutely crucial that you've got that passion to kind of pull you through. The second reason that people normally want to do maths at A-level is because it helps them to get into their degree choice that maybe they've already had um, as a goal, maybe something like engineering or something to do with some kind of other science aspect. This is a good reason, but if you don't have the love of the subject and you just want to be able to do it to get into a particular, particular university or a particular course, you must make sure that you have that passion for that course so that you will be able to keep committed and dedicated to maths at A-level. The third reason, which some people sometimes say to me, is that their family want them to study maths at A-level. By itself, this reason is not a very good reason. Uh, it won't help you get through trying to do lots of your homework when you don't like the subject and you don't feel like you need it for your university course. Having pressure from your family is not enough to stay committed at this particular stage. So if it's only that your family want you to do it, I would highly, re I would highly recommend you reconsidering and thinking about some other A-level choices. Hopefully though, all three of those reasons apply. For me, it was just that I love the subject and that's why I picked maths at A-level. So what does maths at A-level actually look like? Well, there are three broad areas. The biggest area, which takes up two thirds of the course is just called pure. Now pure will have some topics in it that are brand new to you. Things like differentiation and integration, which together are known as calculus. There are lots of things to do with graphs and areas and gradients. There'll be some familiar areas as well. Things like trigonometry, sequences and series, vectors, other stuff like that that you may be familiar with from GCSE, but obviously we're gonna make things become a lot more challenging. One of the other areas that we look at, which is under the applied section, is statistics. Statistics makes up one sixth of the whole course. And things that you'll study about there will include stuff like data handling and probability, which you've already got some ideas of from GCSE. But there'll be some new things like probability distributions, which is things like the normal distribution and the binomial distribution that you may have heard of before. The last part, the final sixth, is mechanics. Mechanics, people often think is good for students who like physics, but I've found that all sorts of students like mechanics. It's my favorite area. It's things like if there's a, a box on a slope and it's sliding down, we want to know how fast it might be moving, or it might be things like ladders resting against walls. We want to work out if someone climbs up the ladder, will it slip and fall or will it stay in place? So those are the three areas. There's pure, statistics, and mechanics. Pure takes up two thirds, mechanics and statistics one sixth each. And as you can tell that those three should add up to the whole course. So how do you get examined? Well, at the end of year 13, you have three exams. And because the content is two thirds pure, two of those three exams are going to be pure. And it could be from either year one or year two. It's worth noting that you can use a calculator for all three of these exams as well. 
The third exam is the applied one, which will be 50-50 stats and mechanics to represent that they are one sixth each of the course. Something that I always like to point out to students is that your teaching style is going to be very, very different. When you were studying for GCSE, you probably would have looked at, say, ratio in year seven, year eight, year nine, year 10, and year 11, each time making that same topic get a little bit harder, harder, right from simplifying all the way up to algebraic kinds of things. The difference with A-level is that you learn a topic and you don't really come back to it until you get right to the end of the course and do some revision. So you don't get many times to repeat over things. And sometimes people find that a little bit harder because they need to be more independent and keeping on top of their revision in their own time. Most schools will give you about five hours of lessons in class with a teacher per week. And on top of that, you need to be doing a minimum of five hours of homework and independent study. The independent study is really important with maths because each of you is going to find your areas of strength and your areas of weakness that you need to be able to adjust what extra work that you should be doing. Luckily, you've got loads of videos on my channel that will help support you with any of the things that you have found difficult and you want to be able to recap and go over. You're also gonna need some new equipment as well. So you've got a choice of these two calculators that I have here. The first one is called the ClassWiz calculator. It's the cheaper option and I think it's okay. It's necessary for lots of things in statistics, but it has kind of a small screen and it's a little bit more fiddly to use and you're doing lots of calculations. So the bigger the screen, the better really. The second one that you've got is the graphics calculator with this large sort of uh, colored screen that you have here. Um, this one is just a lot more powerful. It is more expensive, but if you have this from the beginning of the course, it means you get used to all of the extra features that it has that can just save you tons and tons of time. If you want to know a bit more about the kinds of questions that there will be, or you just want to feel a bit more prepared, I've put a link in the description to Edexcel's website where they've got some really good preparation materials with some questions that you can download, as well as some supporting videos. Or you might like to just get started and have a look at the first few chapters of Pure Year One that are on my channel page, so you get a sense of the kinds of things you'll be learning and how I like to teach them. If you think you're also interested in studying further maths, I've made a separate video on whether you think that one should be right for you. So do go and check that out and hopefully it might be something that will help you. If there's anything else that you think other students should know about before they pick their A-levels, please do add a comment below giving some extra advice because it's always good to hear from other students and not just from teachers as well. If you are gonna start taking maths A-level, make sure that you subscribe to my channel because I have got videos on every single aspect of the Edexcel course for every single chapter and every single exercise in the textbooks. So it's a really great place to come to if you're finding yourself getting stuck with anything. If you're already a subscriber of mine and you've got a cousin or a brother or a sister who's thinking about taking maths at A-level, please do share this with them. Drop a like on this video to help other people see it and I'm wishing you the best of luck with making your choices and I hope you enjoy a well-deserved summer break after all of your assessments.